Kawasaki were the first people to bring fuel injection onto a mass-produced 1100cc motorcycle. And here it is. Have a look at that. A beautiful, pristine 1981 TPZ 1100 B1. And what a beauty. You only find pristine things like this in South Africa. A one year only model with a bikini fed B2 coming a year later, but that had digital fuel injection as this system is called port injection, which is a bit crude, but it still seems to work perfectly 40 years on. Yes, 40 years on with this fuel injection. Now, they were problematic to start with, and I know this one was problematic when this 81 was restored back to its current condition. And apparently it's even got a Golf fuel pump in it, which is a bit weird. Anyway, still pulls perfectly smooth. No hesitation. And revs all the way to 9,000 RPM. Kawasaki claimed 220 kilometers an hour out of this thing, fuel injection, GPZ 1100, and it weighs, oh yes, quarter of a ton, 250 kilograms. Thankfully, Bosch made the fuel injection on this pristine example, as many of the injectors were actually thrown into the bin and replaced by carbs. Even the Unitrack GPZ from 83 and the superb 750 Turbo all had fuel injection. But that stopped very abruptly in 1984 when the GPZ 900 arrived with carbs. And that was the end of fuel injection, basically. Oh, beside they threw some on a Z1383, which was a dreadful bike anyway. I must say the B1 is a commendable engineering feat. Fuel injection in the early 80s runs smooth. But what's it like to ride as a bike? Well, actually not bad. 250 kilos and it is surprisingly agile. The gearbox is an absolute peach. Embarrassing. So many of today bikes, I don't even know where it's gone backwards. And even the seat is better than anything I've ridden today. Riding position, upright. But the funniest thing is this lunchbox speedo thing. Who came up with that invention? the most un-aerodynamic front end in the history of the world. Still, these big bars does <laughs> give you a real manly, aggressive riding position. I love it. I'd ride this every day on all days. Especially in South African weather. Beautiful. One more thing, because you can hear it, that Kawasaki two-cylinder whirr. Just such a sweet mechanical noise. Roller bearing crankshaft. You just know, well, you can guarantee that this engine will last another 40 years. So there we have it, the first GPZ 1100cc, well, 1089cc, but it's an interesting little thing here. As you can see, the fuel injection, it's not like we know it on this model, it's actually called port induction because it's inside the cylinder head, not inside the throttle body like modern bikes, which isn't a problem. Now, all air-cooled Kawasaki's are actually worth a fortune. This one's probably worth 150,000 Rand or more but what we really need are the two-stroke triples. And of course, the Z1900, which, wow, they're worth the price of a house. There we go, fuel injection. And we have to thank a guy called Jonas, I think, Hesselman, who was actually Swedish that invented fuel injection in 1925. And all the aircraft manufacturers bought it off him. Do you know why? Because you can barrel roll an aeroplane without carburetor starvation. Very clever. 
Anyway, after riding this classic 80s Kawasaki with fuel injection, I am actually on a quest to find the most exciting fuel injected 80s Kawasaki of all time. Of course, the GPZ 750 Turbo. The only one that really worked. I think I know where there is one. 